Light me a cigarette. The Crooked Way was a 1949 crime film directed by Robert Florey that starred John Payne, Ellen Drew, Sonny Tufts, and some others. It was an enjoyable movie that I'll summarize and then give some closing thoughts about it. Well, we open up at Letterman General Hospital, where we have the character of Eddie, played by actor John Payne. He is a World War II veteran who is recovering from a head injury from the war. Looks like he's got a chunk of shrapnel in his head, and you guessed it, he's got a bad case of amnesia. Well, the doctor suggests that he should go out and just kind of being out in public, hopefully someone will see him, recognize him, and, you know, kind of help jog his memory, you know, help remember who he was. Sounds like a good idea. What could possibly go wrong? So he goes off to Los Angeles and he steps off the train and wouldn't you know it, right away, he's recognized by some tough looking characters. You know, the, we thought you were dead and what are you doing back in town? You know, that kind of thing. Well, Eddie plays along. And he says he's there to look up some people. And they bring him along with them. And wouldn't you know it, it's to the police headquarters to go to the homicide division. Where these guys reveal that he was actually once Eddie Riccardi, who was this guy with quite a rap sheet. So we got our first clue of who he was. Apparently he was connected with crime before. But they tell Eddie that they can't hold him. So they let him go, but they warn him that if he steps out of line, they'll step on him. Well, the detective who had picked him up, this Lieutenant Williams, who's played here by Rise Williams, he discusses the situation with his captain, who's played by Charles Evans, and this lieutenant is very suspicious, of course, of Eddie, and he's going to kind of follow him and keep up this investigation. Now, in the meantime, Eddie leaves to go get a cool, frosty orange juice. Mmm. And there he has a run-in with the character of Nina, played by lovely actress Ellen Drew. And she knows him, but... He doesn't know her. Hello. Is that the only thing you've got to say? Well, there's a lot more I could say, but... But you... Let's see. Nancy Morgan? Nora Murphy? No, you you don't look like Nora Murphy. What'd you come back for, Eddie? A man has a right to come home, hasn't he? Well, I do love the amnesia story device, so he tries to play along, and she's suspicious of him, but offers to give him a ride to his hotel. Now, we cut over to the crime boss, Vince. He's played here by actor Sonny Tufts, a great tough guy actor. you got to love that last name, too, Tufts. (laughs) I've seen him in other films before, like Blaze of Noon with William Holden, and he is here as this crime boss, cold as ice. By the way, a nerdy side note, but the guy getting beaten up here, the character Kelly... It's played by actor John Harmon, who played one of the gangster characters in the old classic Star Trek episode, A Piece of the Action. It's one of my favorites. Well, during this time, Vince gets a call from Nina, letting him know that Eddie is back in town. I've been saving this for five years. Everyone in life has his Bible. This is mine. Take it out and read it every day. For you to remind me of a guy I grew up with. Got shoved around with. We used to take a lot of raps together. Some people would call a guy like that a, a loyal friend. He was. Until he turned into a dirty stool pigeon. And let me take the rap for him. And we find out that he had turned stool pigeon and gotten Vince arrested while Eddie had gone free and then left to serve in the war. Now note, at no point in the film does Eddie say, hey, cool it, I've got amnesia, I don't remember any of this. No, he just kind of stays in character and keeps playing along, trying to piece together who he was before. Well, Vince just says to him, get out of town, then yells, 
give him some air, which involves being painfully pushed down some stairs. Ouch! Well, Eddie recovers from being flung down the metal staircase and decides to head back to see his doctor again. But on the cab ride there, he changes his mind and heads instead to see Nina again. He confronts her. He's getting a little bit animated, telling her that he doesn't know who he is and that she's the last person he can turn to. Please help me, he begs, but she's just not buying it. But we do find out that Nina was originally his wife, but had divorced him years ago and now works for Vince. She shows Eddie a scar on her shoulder where he had once burned her. So he leaves, but as he does, she looks down at a gift that he had given her when they were still married. So, hmm, maybe there's still something there. But we cut back to the crime boss, Vince, and he's there talking to Petey, who's played by actor Percy Helton, who was in a few episodes of Petticoat Junction. Oh, Rob, you can't go one movie review without referencing Petticoat, can you? Well, anyhow, he's this mousy little guy who works as a tail for Vince. Now, Lieutenant Williams shows up, and I love old crime films where they have scenes like this one, where it's the cool cop facing off with the crime boss, and you can tell they both clearly loathe one another. Kelly, he's gone and gotten himself killed. Just like Kelly. You never know what he'll do next. That goes for a lot of guys. Take you and then again, take Eddie Riccardi. You boys forgive and forget and back in business again. You and Riccardi got a lot in common. Why don't you ask him? At the moment, you're number one. And it won't be any manslaughter charge and out in two years. I put you away this time. It'll be for keeps. You got all the answers figured out, haven't you? I might have. Sooner than you think. So sorry. So Eddie goes to see Nina. Now Vince finds out about this and he is suspicious that Nina might be pulling the old double cross and he sends his guys to get Eddie. Now, Eddie tries one more time to convince Nina about what's going on, tries to convince her to leave with him, but she's just not having it. So Vince's guys appear and they take Eddie away. So we cut to the bar and, hey, it's Frank Katie from Petticoat Junction, wouldn't you know it? Sorry, Kate, we're all out of the canned peaches this month. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, his character gives the lieutenant a call with a tip about Eddie. And Williams shows up, but it's too late. Nina tells him that he's already left. So the lieutenant corners Vince again and tells him that he wants Eddie. He also lays out that he has some forensic evidence on Vince that's going to get him framed for a guy that he killed. Well, Vince gets a call and uses that distraction to shoot the lieutenant then tells him to bring Eddie to him. So Eddie gets clubbed, and then the bad guys set it up to make it look like Eddie was the killer of this lieutenant, leaving him with the body and a gun in the car. Well, Eddie wakes up later and he runs off before the cops arrive and he hitches a ride back to town, narrowly avoiding getting arrested. Now, he goes back, as you can expect, to Nina. And he's got a little bit of an attitude now. Eddie. Shut up. Get those lights off. Eddie, what happened? You certainly did a neat job of tying me into a murder. Joe Williams was killed tonight. You? I don't know. Last thing I remember was being slugged over the head at Vince Alexander's. Oh, I know you think that... I haven't got time to think. All I want is a few bucks, your car, and you in my sight till I get out of here. Betty, you've got to believe me. Huh. Believe you? Like you believed me? I'll make mention of this at the end of the review, but there was some really nice contrast and shadow, you know, that noir goodness. I really love the cinematography of this film. So they do leave together, but Vince and his goons are on the way. So Eddie and Nina escape through some gunfire, and he just wants to drop her off and go on his own, but she's insistent now on staying with him. 
So he stops to steal a gun, and then he asks her if she has a friend that they can stay with. The police are also on the move, too, and they plan on roadblocks and so on to make sure that no one gets out of town. So Eddie and Nina are staying with one of her friends, one that doesn't seem too fond of Eddie. They're having dinner together when a thug breaks in and shoots at him, but Nina moves at just the right moment to take the bullet. So Eddie kills the bad guy, but now he's got to get medical help for Nina. Now, as she's laying there mortally wounded, there's some gorgeous heavy contrast, particularly Eddie's face kind of cast in complete shadow. It's like the film is telling us that old Eddie is slipping back into his old, darker self, the world of crime. Maybe that memory is returning and maybe he's just going in a dark direction as he sees his former love dying. He calls for a doctor, and the doctor gives him a chance to leave before the police arrive. So Eddie heads to Vince's warehouse to wait for him there. And while he's there, he meets with Petey, you know, the mousy guy from earlier. Eddie tells a cab driver who he is, knowing that this will lure the police to the warehouse. Because, you know, he is a wanted man, he's in the newspapers and so on. And it's here at the warehouse he's going to plan his final ambush on Vince. With only a little bit of the film left... I'm going to stop the overview here. No spoilers. I'll let you catch the ending of the film for yourself. The Crooked Way featured some strong performances, some great direction, and a lot of that moody, shadowy atmosphere that I love in crime films. It really had an engaging story that kept your interest to the very end. where We really want to see what happens to Eddie and if he finally gets his memories back again. And yes, I know the amnesia device can be a little bit trite, but I mean... Come on, I grew up in the 80s with stories of Magnum P.I. or B.A. Baracus losing their memory from a head injury for the sake of the episode, so I don't mind. I like it. Memory loss stories can be fun, especially when they're fused with that heavy shadow noir element, and I think it makes for a great crime story. The movie was directed by Robert Flory, who has directed a number of movies and shows, but most notably Tarzan and the Mermaids, which was my last review. John Alton was a cinematographer here. And again, I just have to point out the beautiful usage of that chiaroscuro to create that sense of depth and drama. The heavy shadows were just brilliantly used on John Payne's face through the film, really casting an uncertainty where his character's morality was, if he was getting his memory back, or if maybe he was slipping too far back into his old character as a criminal. And I really do admire actor John Payne, who played the protagonist, Eddie. You know, I really feel like he's in his element as a tough guy here. And he was exceptional in the movie Kansas City Confidential as a jaded former veteran falsely accused of a crime in that movie. The guy always seems to be getting a bum rap in these films. Well, except for Miracle on 34th Street. This film had me noticing a trend of crime films of the 40s, and that's the theme of a returning war veteran trying to find his place in society again. I was reminded of Robert Montgomery in the film Ride the Pink Horse, where that post-traumatic stress was a real thing, even in movies 80 years ago. And even here, maybe we can see that amnesia theme as representing how the character Eddie can't quite find out where he belongs in society, or better yet... Who does he even know anymore once he's home from the war? Maybe that's a theme I'm reading into a little too much in the film, but I do like the idea of the hero that's returned to a transformed world. I'll be honest, watching the film, I really didn't feel the chemistry of his relationship with the character Nina, played by Ellen Drew. She's a great actress. The film really builds, though, on that distrust, and then suddenly felt like they had all worked it all out and they were on the run together. But watching this, what I was left wondering was, you know, Nina makes mention of the past physical abuse she received from, you know, old Eddie. But how do we know that when his memory is fully restored, he won't revert back to the same old abusive character he was before? Amnesia is a tricky thing in these old films, I guess. And I really like Sonny Tufts in this film as the crime boss of Vince. You know, as an actor in this film, he always seems to have that permanent look of disgust or disappointment on his face (laughs) it really works well for a crime boss especially when you're dealing with you know a mousy character like Petey, played by actor percy helton did i mention he was in petticoat junction by the way one final thought if you look at the movie poster for this over in the upper right hand corner doesn't that look an awful lot like robert mitchum 
Is it just me? I mean, that's part of what got me curious to check out this film. I was looking through other films done by Robert Florey, and I saw this one and thought, hey, a Robert Mitchum crime film, but alas, he's not in this film at all. But hey, it's still a great film anyway, even if the movie poster is a little misleading. Well, those are my thoughts on the movie The Crooked Way from 1949. I thought this was an excellent crime film. Again, beautiful use of the heavy contrast in the black and white. John Payne was excellent in this film as usual. And there's several copies of this on YouTube as I do this review, so you can go see for yourself. It's an excellent crime film, and it's worth checking out.